Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today I want to show you AutoFilter, the plugin inside of Studio One, because I've been asked quite a lot recently what kind of filter plugin I would recommend to animate your breaks and buildups. And AutoFilter is built right into Studio One. You don't need to purchase any additional software for this. And yeah, it's just an amazing tool, particularly for electronic music that I want to show you today. So AutoFilter, you find that if you go to your Studio One browser as usual, right down here and then you just navigate up to the effect section and auto filter is one of the plugins that you're going to see in the list and you can add that to any instrument or audio track of your choice by simply dragging and dropping it from the browser in classic studio on fashion this is what it looks like when you open it up and to demo this i have just a little groove here going on and upon activation it just acts like the classic kind of filter bank. I can also control this, by the way, for my fader port. I set this up by clicking on this wrench icon here, or this gear wheel, I'd say. And then you find this controlling menu here, and then I just turn the fader off fader port, move the parameter here on auto filter, click this triangle to sign, and now I'm controlling the automation of this cutoff with my fader on fader port, which is really handy, I find. And if you'd like to learn more about how to do this in Studio One, it also works with other MIDI controllers, of course, that I'm going to link you my focus mode and controlling video that's covering everything about this topic right here. But let's get back to auto filter. So right off the bat, it's a two filter bank unit, so to say, with filter one right here and filter two. And they can be sequenced either in chain mode Mode. This means that the signal is first traveling through the first filter and then through the second filter or parallel and then both of these filter types would work on the audio material at the same time. Notice that you can also bypass the second filter right here. So if you just need a very basic filter, then just bypass the second one and you can work with the first one. Aside from that, we have the same filter types to choose from on both filters. So we have analog emulations of state variable filters in both 12 and 24 decibels per octave right here. Variable state means that you can blend them between the low pass that's only letting the low frequencies pass the band pass which is somewhere in the middle and the high pass that only lets the high frequencies pass and the cutoff frequency can be set right here so if you want to listen to that blend for a second it sounds like this right this is the high pass only letting the high frequencies through this is the band pass which is kind of like a reverse bell and the low pass only lets the low frequencies through as the name suggests so everything that's left to the cutoff here everything below 3 kilohertz in this case 3.2 kilohertz is being let through and everything else is cut off and in the high pass setting everything above 979 is let through and everything below is cut off we also have a digital filter. This is kind of the same as the analog one, but it has a bit of a different characteristic, especially when being overdriven with resonance. And we also have a comp filter, which I really like because it adds a little bit of pitch shifting. Finally, we also have ladder filters to choose from. These are the classic MOOC style filters in 12, 18 and 24 decibels per octave low pass setting. To control these parameters, we also have an envelope, which can be either moving the cutoff to the right by being uh, set here in positive or with negative, it can move the cutoff to the left. So every time that the envelope is being triggered by the audio material that's coming in, the cutoff moves either to the left or to the right, depending on whether this is set to here or to here. And uh, this can make for some very nice rhythmic effects. Notice that you can also enable sidechain here, and then you could use the audio triggers of a different signal to move that cutoff up and down, which can be quite interesting, have some very nice rhythmical results sometimes. Okay, so what does this sound like? 
You can hear how the kick drum, right? It's now triggering the cutoff every time. And we can do the same thing with the resonance. And you're already shooting some lasers out of your little spaceship here. So you can get really creative with that. And every time you come up with something where you move your mouse and you think, oh, that's really cool, Studio One should do that for me, you can just right click the parameter right here and edit automation to just add this to your arrangement. Every time you move your mouse, you think that's a cool sound effect, make an automation for it and your music is going to sound so much more complex and creative. Okay, then we also have an LFO right next to the envelope and that would be this section right here. So when we turn that up, then the LFO instead of the envelope is moving the cutoff either to the right if it's turned all the way up or to the left if it's all the way down. You can also combine the two for some even more drastic effects. And the shape of the LFO as well as the speed can be set right here. So this is the triangle. This is the sine wave. You can also make that a bit slower just so you hear the waveform a bit more clearly. And notice how you have this little transport bar, which helps you to track what the auto filter does really nicely. And of course, you can also get really rhythmical with this if you want to. This can be particularly cool if you use like an analog delay behind it. I'm just gonna drag the analog delay right here to add that. Yeah. So that is really, really cool. I also want to mention that for the envelope, you can set the individual attacker release types right here to make it more snappy. And finally, we also have a step sequencer inside of the LFO section, which I also really, really enjoy. So there you can just draw in your own complex waveforms. And you can see how you could use this to build up your bridges and to animate your breaks and things like that in your songs going forward. Hopefully this is something that inspires you. We can also unsync the LFO right here and then it runs in free tempo. And it goes all the way up to audio rate, 30 Hertz, which is incredibly fast. And of course, any of these parameters could be mapped right here to my fader port if I wanted to. So yeah, you can get really, really creative with it. Definitely try it out. The best way to learn it is by using it, I find. Before I let you go, I just want to show you one quick breakup that I've built extremely quickly using Auto Filter and Room Reverb. It's basically just a bypass automation that is toggling these effects on and off. And it sounds like this. Right? Every time this goes down, this is on. So you can really use this in a multitude of ways to spice up your breaks. Thank you for watching.